So in the last video, we learned how to uh, switch to spherical coordinates. We need to use dv is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And so I thought we would uh, start with an ex just a basic example of finding the volume of a hemisphere. And uh, so it says bounded by this and then the xy plane. I guess I, I went ahead and drew the picture. This equation gives you the full sphere going all the way around. It's a full uh, the shell of a ball of radius 5. But it tells you that, whoops, you can't read that 5. It tells you that you want this sphere to be, uh, I want the, the volume between this half sphere and the xy plane. So I, I want the top part of the sphere, the top half of the sphere. And so you could try to set this up in Cartesian, but you're going to have a lot of square roots and it's going to be quite nasty. Uh, so let's just go directly to spherical. So first off, we'll recognize that the volume, in general, volume, you can either compete with a double integral or a triple integral. You really want to use triple integrals in situations like this. It'd be a lot harder to do as a double integral because you don't have spherical, for starters. So the volume is the triple integral over E of 1 dV. That's a good place to start. And then you say, well, okay, uh, let's leave a little space because I'm going to have some interesting bounds on these integrals. I know that dv becomes a rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And now I just have to figure out the bounds. And so I, I just look at this solid and I say, all right, well, look, what's rho doing? Rho is going from 0 out to 5 everywhere, right? That's as far away as you can get from this, um, from the origin is 5. And by the way, I'm looking, I want the volume of this. So I'm thinking of this as a solid. So I'm cutting it with respect to rho first. And uh, so rho goes from 0 out to 5. Not too bad. Uh, what's phi doing? Well, phi is starting here. People sometimes struggle with the phi. But it's really not bad if, you, if, if you'll make sure that you understand where it starts. Phi is the angle off of the positive z-axis. Let's label. Uh, I'm starting here and I'm swinging down. So this is 0, swinging from 0 down to the xy plane. That's happening right here when, I, when phi is pi halves. So phi is going from 0 to pi halves. And now theta, hopefully it's immediately clear, theta swings all the way around. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. We just need to evaluate this thing. Tell you what, I will do this one with you. Uh, so first off, let's just realize that there are no thetas in this. So this 0 to 2 pi d theta is just going to kick out a 2 pi at the end. So I can immediately write this as 2 pi times. the. I can separate the integrand here. There are different um, variables involved as a product. It's rho squared times sine phi. I can break this up. And so our nice um, theorem that we talked about back in 12.5 says you can write this as the integral from 0 to 2 to pi halves times sine phi d phi. So there's that one. Times, and then I just have to go ahead and integrate this uh, 0 to 5 rho squared d rho. And so I'll, I'll work it out with you. We're going to get 2 pi. Uh, integral of sine is minus cosine. Minus cosine of pi halves is 0. Subtract plug in 1. So I get minus cosine of, I just said 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So the point is I have a minus cosine of pi halves is 0. And then a minus cosine of 0 is uh, actually 1. So it turns out to be a minus, because it's 0 minus minus 1. I just get a 1. And then I'm going to get what? rho cubed over 3, plug in 5, so I'm going to get 125 over 3, and so this becomes uh, 250 pi over 3. That's the precise volume of that hemisphere. So let's stop this video here, and then we'll go on to the next one momentarily.